Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you provide for us every single day. We ask, Father, for your Lord, our Holy Spirit, to be with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He said, unless a man is born of water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The question that I have for you guys, are those words still important today? Are they relevant for today? They are, aren't they? They are, including yourself. If you think about eternal salvation, it's important. It's very important. Why? It's because someday you guys are going to want to come to that decision in your life, and you're going to say, I want to be baptized. And no one can make that choice but you. And as you get bigger, I know you guys are probably not baptized, but as you get bigger, you're going to want to get baptized. You know what happens when you're baptized? You die to the old, and you're raised in the new. From God. It's symbolic. What, mijo? I know you do, mijo. I know you do. You, you too? Oh, okay. You know what happens when you're baptized? You're making a statement to all your friends and all your family and to all the people that you know. You're saying in your heart, you're saying to everybody, from this day forward, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to follow him in every way. And you know what I'm saying? Good for you. Put that in the hook in your mind and say, someday I want to get baptized and do it. Okay? Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, verse 5, and it reads, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Well, good morning. good morning. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. Now, can you hear me? You know, every time I look at you guys, I see those smiling faces. It's good. It's good. The alternative could be a lot worse, that's for sure. I know that I'm not Joseph, but God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes, he is. Water and the Spirit. The year was 2005, about 17 years ago. Actually, that was the beginning of a bad year for us. You see, my mom passed away in January the 25th, 2005. So we were on course for a bad year, except six months later, here I was, 
preparing and working on going on a mission trip to the Yucatan of Mexico. We had uh, worked on the letter before we left and uh, we finished composing a few letters. We made copies and mailed them out to our friends and family asking for donations to help fund our little trip. Here's where the good part comes in, where the Lord shows us that he's good. With the support of our dear church and its beloved believers, the good Lord granted to us just, just enough money to cover all our expenses. Right from the beginning, you know, it was right from the very, very beginning. All these blessings just came out of nowhere from every direction. Everything was just flowing, clicking. And so good to know that you're working with God instead of against him. Everything works, believe me. And then finally on July of 2005, my lovely wife, Debbie Sue, my very good friend, Tom Jordan, and myself, we boarded on a jet plane in Juarez, Mexico. Our destination, Tapachula, Mexico, about five miles from the Guatemalan border. Our mission, to take the word of the Lord to these forsaken people. Or so we thought. You know, I like to do things in an orderly way. And I think that now is an appropriate time to, to speak this. First things first. And the first thing we need to do is pray. Pray for the blessings of the Lord. So let's bow our heads, if we will. Gracious Father in heaven, it's been about 17 years since we had this experience. I pray, my Lord, for the Holy Spirit to come and guide me in all truth. Help me to remember the things that I need to remember, Lord, to say them in a way that's appropriate to you and to those around us. Help me to remember the things that happened and as true as possible that we can get, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know that the realization of our trip hadn't really set in yet. I knew that I was on the plane. I know that we were flying and going to Mexico. But that didn't really set in until we were actually flying over the city of Mexico. I mean, that place is huge, huge, humongous. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. And I can safely say that my eyes were wide open. I kept looking out that window as the city just kept going by and I could see into all these different areas the life that was going on day by day by day. It was something else. Well, when we finally arrived in Merida, we received a very nice reception by some very nice people. You know, I just want to say very quickly that the person that went and picked us up was driving a Volkswagen, a Jetta. And he just piled us in there, luggage and everything. 
It didn't matter that I was pressed up against the, the uh, windshield making funny faces, but it had an air conditioner, and it was hot. July, hot. But it didn't matter. We got there and they introduced us to something else, the best tasting uh, mangoes that you could possibly wish for. They were delicious. They were absolutely delicious. And after gorging for a little while, we got down to the business at hand. There was about a, a group of us, about maybe 25 people. Most of them were young people. From where, I don't know, but they were from different places. There were about six or seven of us that were older, more mature adults. And everyone, most everyone, received their assignments rather quickly. And as people began to go their separate ways to their new destination, to wherever they were going to set up their housing arrangements, Tom and Debbie and I were called into a separate office. And there we were informed that there was a change of plans. And we were not going to Tapachula. We protested, of course, but to no avail. Instead, we received a last minute assignment on the poor side of town mainly on the outskirts of Medina, way off to the side. You know, they had told us that there was uh, political things that were going on that we weren't aware of and that we brought up the subject of language. Oh, I speak Spanish. Wrong. Tom speaks better Spanish than I do. That was no help. They speak a different Spanish down there. And we had an interpreter. And our interpreter, who also doubled as our driver, was heaven sent. I mean, we couldn't have done anything without that driver. He was having sent because he was familiar with the surroundings, the surrounding areas. He was having, having sent because he was also very familiar with the people and their customs. Heaven sent. After about an hour drive from our hotel, we arrived at our work site. Now, I never saw Tom's. Did I, Tom? I don't think I did. I never saw Tom's work site. But Debbie and I were thrown together. And so we had arrived at the single structured building about, no, oh, I'd say a 30 by 30 foot building with a door. It had these decorations on it. Somebody was looking for a key. I don't know if it worked or not. I know that there were no glass or window panes. There was just these empty windows. There was certainly no air conditioning, and Debbie would have to get along through that. We had one electrical outlet, which was outside of the building. I'm glad that I carried a, an extra extension cord. We had two wooden pews, two smaller wooden benches. We had three or four maybe wooden chairs and maybe one small makeshift table, which we quickly utilized for our equipment. Oh, and there was absolutely nothing on the walls to decorate. The, work, the church needed work, for sure. 
But everybody pitched in. We got it done. The people? The people that we were supposed to take the word of God to, they were extremely gracious. And very strangely, very, very strangely, very happy. Everything that we saw was a new experience, new and exciting. Everything that we felt was warm and gracious. These people didn't do anything spectacular to be recognized by men, no. No, these people were real. They were loving, they were giving, they were peaceful, and oddly enough, very, very happy. I mean, how could this be? These people were poor, dirt poor. They were poorer than I had ever been or even thought about being. But they were happy. Notice the way that I use the words strangely and oddly. Why? Because it's not normal. It's not normal. Nobody can be that happy. Nobody should be that happy. But it's not normal, is it? You know, it's been 17 years since the experience, but I'm still working on self. Myself. And we think that everybody wants to be like us? I don't think so. They were the ones that were happy. We weren't. And by now, things were moving along very quickly now. And the next thing you know, I was looking at our new speaker, Miss Debbie Sue. Me? Well, I was the technician. And I also brought along a very ugly, very ugly attitude. Me. Like I said, I was still working on self. I was like a little, spoiled little rich kid who didn't get his way, and, and, and so I threw a tantrum, and, and I, I, all I wanted to do was to get my ball and go home. And that wouldn't have been so bad, except, except that I held that grudge for every day that we were there. And I apologize to you, my baby, putting up with my childish ways. You know, Jesus heard his disciples muttering, murmuring like we often do. And many of his disciples went back and they never walked with him again. Can you believe that? I wonder why. They didn't want to walk in the way of Jesus Not only that, but he had given them a hard lesson to learn. He said, I am the bread of life. And he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes shall never thirst. But I said to you that you've never seen me, and yet you do not believe. Now listen very carefully, very carefully, because... These are the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. John 6, verse 63 says, It is the Spirit. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak are spirit, and they are life. Did you get that? The words that he spoke were spirit. And they are life. Verse 64, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. 
I wonder where we fit in on all this. Do we believe? You know, from the first day to the last day that we were there, these humble people showed us how to live. They showed us how to live. We did everything together. They showed us how to live and how to live more abundantly. They took us everywhere. The driver, the interpreter, the people themselves, they were happy, 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 happy people. And we went and did everything. I have to tell you this story. Somewhere, one of those days that we were out there, they, they took us to this place that was about two hours away, out in the middle of I don't know where. When we finally got to this little opening, we saw this little building. And this was a smaller church than the first one. Of course, the people were being rounded up to come to church. And so we're standing there waiting. We waited about five minutes. Then we heard something. So, oh, here they come. They were coming. There was an old pickup. It had these bars in the back and it was surrounded by chicken wire. And all these people were in the back standing up and singing. Singing to the most beautiful music I ever heard. Happy, laughing, joyously joking with each other. They pulled up in the church yard. I say yard, and it wasn't a court, it was a yard of rocks and brick and whatever. And this building, like I said, was worse than the first one. It was smaller, it was, had no windows in it, no air conditioning, no electricity, just in the middle of nowhere. But they were happy and they were coming to church. And they got down off the truck. People were helping them, helping each other get down. They were laughing and having a good time. And after the church services, we went for a walk. What else is there to do? We went for a walk. Our interpreter was interpreting the things that they were saying. This is so and so, and this is some so and so lived here, and this happened, and it was really, really nice. We laughed, we prayed, and we worshiped together. We worked, and we played, and we sang songs together. Actually, music was a big part of their life. And when they sang, there was no piano, no violins, or any kind of musical instruments. What made it beautiful was that these people, they sang from the very depths of their soul. Church, faith are things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And believe me, their faith was evident. If there's anything, anything at all that I can, I, that I pray I never, never, ever, ever, ever forget, and that's her singing. I thank God for allowing me to hear the angelic voice of a seven or eight year old little boy who had no problem singing louder than the congregation. Lord, may I never forget that. It was beautiful. And every time that I'm feeling depressed or low, 
I remember that and I remember the way that he sang and he lifted me up by singing. You know, I personally believe that we're living in the last days of the history of this earth. The things that go on all around us every single day, the violence, the shootings, the climate changes, the everything, everything is coming to an end. And we may not have time to think things through we may not have time to make a wise decision. But let me direct your focus on something. When Jesus was crucified, there were two thieves that were crucified with him. One was repentant and the other was not. The one who repented said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus accepted and Jesus saved that sinner. I believe that we're in the same kind of ways now. We may not get a chance. I mean, remember that the door of the ark was closed for seven days before it started raining. I don't know what God is going to do. None of us do. It may end today. It may end tomorrow. Who knows? But I would like to close by reading Romans 10.10. 10. And that reads, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember those words, and I hope that you make a call to him very, very quickly. Thank you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we can only thank you, Lord, for the things that you do. You do the things, Lord, that make us happy. You do the things, Lord, that make us sad. You do the things that make us cry. You do all these things, Lord, for us. We know that you're a loving God. We know that you're a forgiving God. We know that you love us too. Father, there's no limit to what you will do and not do for us. So we ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless us in every way possible to make things happen in the way that they should. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.